We know that one of the best protections against severe damage to the body through COVID and from dying is, of course, through that provided by the vaccines. Most of India's urban adult population has already taken two doses of the vaccine, and now we have vaccine boosters coming up for senior citizens with comorbidities or pre existing conditions. But why do we even need boosters after two doses? Do they work better against just having a single dose or a double dose? Should everyone take them? And do they actually increase protection? In this video, we'll answer all such questions about booster doses. Vaccine boosters are further doses of a vaccine and they work in pretty much the same way. They elicit an immune response in our body, leading to the production of antibodies and other crucial products of the immune system. With each dose, the immune system's training to protect against the virus gets more and more refined and precise and targeted. This also increases the efficiency of immune response. There are two main types of immune responses in our body, humoral and cellular. Humoral immune response is what has to do with antibodies. With the help of specialized cells called helper T cells, another group of cells called B cells start producing antibodies. These antibodies monitor freely circulating antigens or parts of the virus which are outside of infected cells. These antibodies then identify them and neutralize them. This is humoral immunity. Then there is cellular immunity. This occurs, as the name suggests, inside infected cells in our bodies. Helper T cells once again kick into action cytotoxic T cells, which then destroy infected cells and prevent the virus inside those cells from multiplying and spreading in the body. Both these types of immunity are necessary for a good immune response. So B cells produce antibodies that neutralize the virus and T cells destroy infected cells. Upon administration of a vaccine or upon getting the disease, the body's immune system ramps up. Helper T cells aid in producing both cytotoxic T cells that kill infected cells as well as B cells which produce antibodies to neutralize the virus. These antibodies exist in our body as long as there is an antigen to neutralize. If there is no threat, there is no need for an immune response. So very naturally, the levels of antibodies and B cells drop in the body over a period of time post vaccination and post disease. This occurs for all vaccinations, for all infection and for all diseases as well. This is also what is happening with COVID. After a few weeks from vaccination, antibody levels drop. And when antibody levels drop and someone gets infected, they can catch the disease. The vaccines protect against severe disease and death, but not necessarily against infection or transmission. So what happens when someone gets infected post vaccination? The body recognizes the virus and an immune response is induced and T cells start mounting specific immune responses that are tailored to COVID. So why do we even need booster doses? If memory B cells and T cells keep us protected anyway, what's the point of boosters? Well, boosters offer multiple benefits to our immune response and improves it. Each time that we get vaccinated, the amount of antibodies produced is higher. This is how we measure the optimal gap between the first and second dose of most vaccines too. At what point after the first dose does giving the second vaccine produce a much higher number of antibodies? And this is also achieved by each booster dose causing the antibody producing B cells to multiply in quantity in our bodies. So with each booster dose, the number and quantity of B cells increase and this increases our antibody production. So when we do get infected, our antibody production becomes higher, the more vaccinated we are and the better our body is able to neutralize the virus quicker. 
There is also a process called affinity maturation. When B cells become activated and produce antibodies, they travel through our body's lymphatic system and lymph nodes and mutate by understanding the disease or the vaccine pathogen better. So they become more and more fine-tuned and thus become more potent. So newer antibodies are able to bind to the virus more strongly and more quickly. We have seen this in trials. All the mRNA vaccines as well as Sinovac, which is an inactivated vaccine, and the AstraZeneca or the Covishield, which is a viral vector vaccine. All of them have shown that a booster dose can cause a giant increase in the level of antibodies that are neutralizing, which means they kill the virus before the virus enters and infects cells. Additionally, an increased flooding of BNT cells is also advantageous against new variants such as Omicron that have a high rate of replication and transmissibility. In the future, when more immune evasive variants occur, it is necessary to take boosters then as well. Booster doses help in neutralizing a fast spreading virus very quickly, thus reducing transmission. The gap between the second dose and the booster dose typically should be based on waning antibody levels as evidenced by studies with the vaccine, but of course they're largely dependent on logistics and availability of vaccines for a large population. So can we mix and match booster doses? Scientifically, the safe answer from all of the trial data that we have so far is yes. It has been seen that mixing and matching vaccines for the booster dose offers an even better immune response than using a third dose of the same series. A different vaccine also typically tends to increase the levels of both antibodies and T cells. However, even without mixing and matching, a booster dose offers a high level of protection against COVID. We do not know at what point in the drop of antibody levels a person starts to lose protection or even if they do. A lot of vaccinated and double vaccinated people and even those who have had the disease in the past are now catching the Omicron variant. What we know is that if vaccinated even with a single dose, the newer patients are likely to stay out of the hospital and also not die, provided, of course, they do not have serious comorbidities. The vaccines so far have been effective and useful in preventing severe disease and death. But considering even those who are vaccinated are showing mild symptoms, it can indicate a loss of protection against a mutating virus. As we expect the virus to become endemic and start circulating in the population in the future, both our vaccinated population numbers and the efficacy of vaccines should go up. The next generation of boosters after a year or so are likely to be focused on preventing transmission and even symptomatic infections entirely.